Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, we are so excited to be able to welcome you into this wonderful event that we have planned for you. Um, we are going to share incredibly helpful information, um, and we hope that it will be a time where you'll be able to um, share any questions or concerns that you may have, um, and you'll get to hear directly from faculty and students within uh, the departments that you're interested in. So um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Angelica Madera, and I am one of the admissions counselors here at APU. Um, I work with students from various um, areas, and I'm just so, so excited and honored to be able to be with um, you all tonight. So um, we have a Q&A section. That's the first thing that I want to share with you. Um, that will come in handy later on, but I want you to, before we start sharing any information or presenting or anything like that, I want you to start thinking of questions that you may have um, for the program that you're interested in or the department that you're looking to be a part of um, and start coming up with those questions and including them in the Q&A section that we have um, and that you have access to at the bottom of um, the Zoom um, toolbar. So you'll be able to include those there. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. And we'll go ahead and get started with um, introductions from the wonderful panelists that we have uh, joining us tonight. So we'll go by departments and we'll get started with the Department of History and Political Science. Thank you, Angelica. <clears throat> okay, so I'm here to speak to you about the Department of History and Political Science. And I'm going to start by talking about some of our faculty. I am on the history side of things. So you see me here at the top. Um, I focus on Latin American history, but like many faculty at APU, I hold a variety of positions. I also am director of undergraduate research. And that means that I encourage students across all disciplines to work with faculty mentors to do original work. Uh, to uh, present their work at academic conferences. And if they do, I provide them funding up to $500 if they apply to me. Um, and I also encourage students and support them if they try to publish their work. I just started uh, last week a new position as Director of Bridge and Launch Programming. And for those of you who are new coming in uh, to APU, and if you're a Gen 1 student, you may have already heard from us. We are starting a new bridge program for incoming um, Gen 1 students this summer, a residential four-week program. You'll earn up to five units of GE credit. So uh, you can contact me if you have more questions about that. So as I said, um, I focus on Latin America. I'm mostly interested in, in the Christianity developed between um, native peoples after European arrival in colonial Mexico. But I've also started a new project about women and labor in the early modern Atlantic world, which is exciting because I don't know very much about women. I've been learning a lot along the way. Uh, I have a link up here. I'm not gonna play it for you, uh, but most of us on our faculty profiles have what's called a handshake video. It's about one or two minutes long and it talks about how we approach our disciplines, why we love our disciplines, some of the things we do in the classroom. So uh, you can go ahead and take a look at some of the different programs you're interested in and see if there's a handshake video. You can get to know your, the faculty a little bit more that way. So we have um, three other, well, two other historians in our department. Um, Dr. Hale directs the humanities program. He'll be teaching that humanities course for the bridge program this summer. Um, he also offers some really exciting and uh, popular classes, including 1968, which focuses just on one year and all the historical events that took place. His research is on, um, on Africa. Uh, Dr. Schramm is currently at Princeton on a very prestigious um, fellowship. We're proud of him. Uh, he teaches U.S. history, U.S. intellectual history, and he wrote a, a wonderfully received book a couple of years ago on the u universities, and now he's focusing on the rise of secularism. And we have an affiliated faculty member from Dr. Petrie's Department of uh, English and Modern Languages, Dr. Fujitani, who teaches for us sometimes, and his uh, focus is Eastern Asian history, and he does really wonderful research on Jesuits in uh, Japan and some other things in China and even the Renaissance in France. Our political science faculty are likewise rather diverse. Uh, we have a licensed attorney in our faculty, Dr. Uh, Professor Hume. Um, he advises the Pre-Law Society, of course, and helps students who are thinking about law school. 
His research um, was recently on the Supreme Court was recently cited in a Supreme Court case. So that was really exciting. Uh, Dr. King is currently on a two year um, finishing up a fellowship at Clemson and he works mainly on political philosophy. Dr. Palm is our department chair and he teaches courses in international relations, allowing students to get a real feel of sort of the global issues. Uh, students in that major take history and political science courses. He focuses on really interesting research like terrorism and counterterrorism, uh, foreign policy and such. And one of our more impressive scholars is um, Dr. Sellers. She teaches a very salient topics, including Congress and the US presidency. Uh, and works on various issues like public policy. She's published on that. And she's currently working on a book about immigrants um, who come to Los Angeles to, um, to build restaurants. And it's a really fascinating work. So our major, we offer several majors and minors, history, political science, of course. The social science major is really um, important for any student who is interested in teaching high school history. Uh, those, this program is designed um, and has an agreement with the state of California where students can bypass the um, credential subject examinations for teachers and go straight into teaching. So that's a really important fact to note about that um, major. We also have several minors, um, history, IR, political science, in addition to pre-law and classics. Our courses uh, for our two main majors, history, we have a very global approach. As I mentioned already, faculty are skilled in teaching Latin America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and in political science are three core uh, subject areas, international relations, political philosophy, and American institutions. And our faculty are very well versed um, in, these, um, in these topics. We have two honor societies students can join, depending on if you're history or political science minded, but really any student can join any of these Honor societies are a little bit dormant now because you know of COVID and we're not on campus, but they will revive once we get back onto campus. So I wanted to point out that our department has had great success in um, our undergraduates doing original research. Um, there is the undergraduate research program offers a yearly competitive um, funding grant. It's called the Scholarly Undergraduate Research Experience. And over the last few years, our students have been successful. You can see here, several students have received this award over the last few years. I wanna point out um, Tess, uh, this student here who is incredibly impressive. She not only won the Sure Award, she also won, won an American Enterprises Institute Award and presented her research in Washington DC in front of policymakers. And she also presented her research in front of the Glendora City Council and she published her research. So she's one of our top students and alums. Um, our other student here, Zachary Furr, he's um, in the military and the reserves, and he also received a sure award, received his um, MA from Cal State Fullerton and published not one, but two articles, one coming out of the sure award and another with research he did afterwards. We have other students as well who've been involved in conference presentations. You can see here, uh, we have six students in the last few years who've gone off to present their work at various regional conferences across the country. I was a mentor for four of them. And that sort of led me to take on this position as director of undergraduate research because I'm really passionate about that with students. You can see here the Phi Alpha Theta uh, Regional Conference, another conference in San Diego, and the big conference for history majors um, or for historians really um, that discusses the intersections of faith and history is the conference on faith and history. So we've had several students um, present their research at that conference. If you wonder what can you do with these majors, where well, here's a little sampling of what if some of our alumni have done, um, entering into politics, political officers. Here is our student I mentioned, who is a, uh, one of our best alums uh, working now in Sacramento. Amayani Figaro was a research assistant of mine and I have my current research assistant who will be talking to you in a few moments about what that experience is like. Also in history, we have students as well going into military. We have a couple of uh, professors uh, David Riggs is now the Dean at um, Illinois Wesleyan University. And here's Zachary Furr, who was a student I mentioned who won the Sure Award and published two scholarly articles. That was a very brief overview of our department and there's so much more we could say, but I wanted to leave the opportunity open for questions. So if you are interested in history or political science, I've included the names of the faculty here and our specialties, you can contact us. 
I've also included the information about um, our department directly, but I have to ask you all if you could pray for administrative assistant, Adriana, she has COVID as does her mother and her daughter. So we're praying for her to get better. So if you have questions, I would uh, ask you maybe just ask, email me directly instead of her because she's you know recovering right now. And I wanna turn it over to my student, um, Aaron Ramos, who has been working as my research assistant for the last couple of years. And I wanted him to talk to you about what his experience has been like with our department um, from a student's perspective. Thank you, Dr. Gutierrez and good evening, everyone. My name is Aaron Ramos. I am a third year student in the Department of History and Political Science. Now, I'm not actually a history major. I only have a minor declared in the subject. My major field of study is Spanish with the Department of English and Modern Languages. So if I could make a shameless plug for English and Modern Languages right there. But upon arriving at APU, I didn't actually have a history minor declared. But after taking some 100 level courses with Dr. Gutierrez, I began to realize how pertinent the study of history is to our context today. And in our classes, we discussed historical events from diverse perspectives, giving special attention to the perspectives of women, indigenous peoples, and just other voices who you may not have heard in your high school history classes. And not only that, but I gained a lot of practical skills in analyzing primary source documents and through gaining analytical skills. And this was definitely beneficial to me in developing critical thinking, learning how to learning to consider how a person's beliefs, economic situation, their social circumstances, what have you, colored the lenses through which they produce the documents that we now study in the classroom. Now, aside from teaching, like Dr. Gutierrez mentioned, our, the historians in our department are often engaged in their own personal research projects. And this is very beneficial because I was personally blessed with the opportunity to join Dr. Gutierrez and her research team as a research assistant. Now, aside from adding to the marketability of my resume and my curriculum vitae, this has been a wonderful opportunity in getting me connected with professional databases, getting hands-on experience with the documents and content that I've learned in the textbooks that we work with in my classes. So if you don't decide to major in history, I would highly recommend at least minoring in history or checking out any of the other programs the department offers, whether that's international relations or social science. Our faculty are all highly trained professionals who are more than willing to help and work with us students to help get us connected to graduate schools and to the professional world. So thank you, everyone. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Gutierrez and Aaron, uh, for sharing with us a little bit about your department. I'm sure that was helpful for um, students who are interested in any of the programs offered um, within that area. I will now um, direct our attention to the Department of Liberal Studies. So um, if uh, Dr. Flores wants to get started and um, also share a little bit about um, the program and also introduce um, the students that we have joining us tonight as well. Great. Thank you, Angelica. Appreciate it. And welcome, everyone, to Azusa Pacific University. It's my great pleasure to, to discuss about the Liberal Studies program. Uh, my name is Paul Flores. I'm a professor in the program, as well as a director of the program. And I've had the, uh, the phenomenal opportunity to be part of the APU community for many years. Uh, let me introduce two of our students. Uh, Kira, you want to go first? Yes, hello everybody. My name is Kira Corismo and I am in my first semester of junior year right now. Um, really, again, enjoying the liberal studies department and everything I'm learning as I um, pursue a career in education. Thank you, Kira. And we have a soon to be graduate student with us, Sophie. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sophie. And like Dr. Flores mentioned, I'm graduating in 115 days, but who's counting? Um, and this is my final semester at APU. I've been here for four years, and I'm on the road to be a middle school math teacher. Super excited to be here with you all. Great, thank you. So liberal studies uh, has nothing really to do with your political affiliation or your perspective on the Bible or, any, or on life. Uh, liberal studies in the, in the collegiate term uh, means a, a broad range or a holistic way approach to education. So our mission statement kind of encompasses that, that you will uh, be part of a Christian worldview, how that works through coursework and service learning experiences in multiple curricula, uh, some of which uh, my colleagues are here on this panel as well too. So I'm very grateful for the privilege of having the opportunity for our students to be in various courses 
uh, outside of our department and some of the phenomenal departments here at the university. Our program includes eight different content areas, all the content areas as part of the elementary and middle school curricula, as well as we use the pedagogy of service learning, which is connected to your coursework designed by professors uh, with the idea of learning student outcomes through service. And we have a variety of courses that do do that. In our core courses, the ones that are connected to subject matter, they are generally in our particular departments across the campus. So that's the word liberal or liberal arts education. You will be taking classes uh, that uh, are designed by professors in that field, expertise in that field, as well as connected to teaching in the education establishment. Uh, also, a part of our core courses, you'll see that list here, and you'll see the various departments, including art, biology, English, history, math, music, PE, and so on. So great opportunities in which to uh, be a part of the, the whole campus in a sense. We think we're, the, we're probably one of the most integrated majors in the, in the campus at Azusa Pacific University. Your first year classes begin with this course called GE 100, it's first year seminar. Um, there's a liberal studies section. I'm gonna have Kira talk about that as um, it's a phenomenal course as you transition into the college life. Kira? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Flores. This class is really, it is, and it's amazing transition as you go into college and all of the people that are gonna be in your class are liberal studies majors as well. So from your very first day of school, you're already building a community with those people that you will continue on through the rest of the liberal studies program. And again, this class is designed to give you basic knowledge of education and teaching that will continue to be built on throughout your four years or however many years at APU. Thank you, Kira. And that course is taught by one of our faculty um, as much as uh, similar to, all, to the first year seminar courses for various departments as well too. Advising is held uh, is available year round. Um, I, I look at advising as a phenomenal opportunity to, to walk the journey with you from a perspective professor's perspective along with the student. Um, I'm gonna have uh, Sophie talk about her advising journey as part of her, her college matriculation. Um, yeah, so academic advising has been absolutely amazing for my time at APU. Um, starting with my freshman year when somehow I accidentally signed up for the wrong history class and there was a big confusion about that to even just last semester having advising with Dr. Flores, not for him to advise me about what courses to take, but about life after graduation and about teaching and those sorts of things. Um, the main takeaway from advising, I would say, is that there's not one point in your college journey that you're walking alone. Your professors and advisors are always just an email away. And even to the point where without advising, I wouldn't have known to add a mathematics minor to become a math teacher. And so they just have all the inside tips and tricks to help you have the career that you want after graduation. Great, thank you, Sophie. And as part of the academic um, program is the Academic Success Center. So you're assigned an academic specialist or an academic success coach who you see that information there as well too. A part of, as I stated earlier before, one of our uh, strong uh, pedagogical ways of teaching at the college level is using service learning. Uh, service learning, unlike community-based experiences, is a service, a meaningful service to one of our constituent partners but there's also learning attached to that. So there, we're hoping that our students achieve learning outcomes or student outcomes through serving uh, our general population in, in the Azusa and Glendora School District um, as well too. And we have those integrated into courses. So there's course release time designed to do that. Uh, one of the first programs that liberal studies students engage in is the teacher apprentice program, generally around your second year. So your first year, you would be taking the GE 100 a seminar and the second year you generally will take uh, introduction to teaching and it features the teacher apprentice program. I'm going to have Kira share about her experience in that program. Thank you. The TAP program is 
an amazing program because you are taking it so early on in your career as a liberal studies student. And so as you take this hand in hand with the intro to education class or the EDLS 200 class, you are learning what you will be doing in the classroom and preparing for different events that will be happening as you complete your apprenticeship. I just finished my apprenticeship at um, a school in Inglewood and it was on Zoom, but it was so powerful to me for me to be with this group of third graders and with um, this teacher that I was interning under because I was seeing the amazing ways that teachers are cr so creative and how creative they can be even in these unprecedented times. So this is a class that just definitely prepares you for, again, your future and really sets the tone for what will be happening. Thank you, Kara. And um, as she said, uh, traditional ways of being a part of a program like ours is you learn these things in the college classroom and you have college students act like they're in third grade or in fourth grade and you see if this things, these theories work. Uh, service learning gives you the opportunity to test those theories with real students and find out if they work and thus that's a heavy uh, reflection piece. Uh, right around our third year, one of our signature programs is connected to diversity in the classroom course where we, we explore ways to develop intercultural competence and we use the service learning project titled College Headed and Mighty Proud. Champ, I'm gonna have Sophie talk about that who experienced that not too long ago. Yes, thank you, Dr. Flores. Um, so the CHAMP program has actually been my favorite service learning program at APU. Um, the way it works is you go to a local school and you get a small group of students. And for about nine weeks, you're teaching them about college. What does a major look like? What's a career look like? How do you take classes? How do you work with professors? And you meet with them for an hour and you play games and teach them these things. And then at the end of the program, they actually get to come to APU and have a graduation ceremony where you go on stage and hand them a diploma with their intended major and intended career. And the reason the CHAMP program is so impactful and it was very impactful for me as a student is because during the weeks when you're teaching, it can be difficult sometimes where some students are not really interested or there's outside factors that are difficult. And so there was a point during my CHAMP mentoring where I questioned if I was actually reaching my students. If you fast forward to the graduation, I had four separate parents and five separate students come up to me and thank me for the impact that I had on their students and for the way that I represented Christ to them and for the fact that I changed their lives and they said they never forget me. And so the CHAMP program is definitely a way that God uses you to reach kids that you have no idea that you're impacting, to show them what it means to go to college and what it means to be a Christian in the world today. Thank you, Sophie. And I've had the opportunity to, to preside over these CHAMP graduations. And Sophie introduced one of our featured fourth grade speakers one time. Uh, the other class uh, is our writing three course where you do research. And I'll have Sophie talk about the research she did. And then also we have connected to a service learning project within special education. Uh, we believe that all students are created in the image of God. And we believe working with students who have unique uh, uh, differences uh, helps us to glorify the Lord and to gain, to gain additional exposure to the beauty of what God's creation is. So if you want to talk about your research project and then working with students with special needs. Yes, happy to. Um, so my research project for this class was about um, the Common Core education system and whether or not it was actually beneficial for students. And the thing that we did in this class that was so interesting was we asked the hard questions and then we couldn't just ask the questions, we had to find answers to them. And so I worked with Dr. Flores all semester to try to find the answer to the question about Common Core and ultimately form a research-based opinion about something I'm directly using in my future career. And even the paper I ended up writing, I can use when I go to grad school and study for a master's degree. So it's a super practical and actually interesting class where you're writing about a, a topic that you're interested in. Then to pivot, the class itself is titled Education and Ethics because we study the ethics of special populations and students with special needs. And we ask ourselves the hard questions about these students and how do we teach these students who learn in a different way and these students who a lot of people typically push aside. So I was a little nervous for the service learning for this course just because I haven't had a lot of experience in special education. Um, we were able to complete the service learning over Zoom this past semester and it was a fantastic experience where I got to meet students who were just absolutely wonderful and I got to see their teachers interact with them. And there were days when the Wi-Fi wasn't working and there were days when a student couldn't see the screen. But through it all, the host teachers modeled 
an openness and a calm presence that really helps reiterate the things we were studying in class about how everyone is made in the image of God. And like Dr. Flores said, everyone has an equal right to a good education. And we as educators and as Christ followers need to do our best to give them that education. Thank you, Sophie. And that reminds me, given the season that we're in, uh, we have been able to pivot to, uh, to virtual service learning projects, which actually have turned out very successful, allowing students to be all over Southern California. And in, in, in many times you, you're invited into the student's house uh, because of the, the virtual scenario. So each student chooses a concentration on a particular subject matter course. Those are listed there. Uh, something you need to do by your third year. We also feature an integrated bachelor's credential program. We're in a, a three plus one model or in, in, within a four year a program, you can achieve the a bachelor of arts degree in liberal studies along with a mild to moderate or a moderate to severe disability education specialist credential. So there's various ways in which you can get ahead if you're considering APU and also uh, ways to think about how do I become a teacher? However, our major have leads to various other vocational pathways. We have many students who have gone on to different other professions other than teaching, some within education areas, some who work on universities on campus with, uh, with us as well too. So uh, if you have any questions, I think always a good thing to do is pursue questions with, with students. So we have two of our liberal study student ambassadors. I'm sure they would be willing to answer questions from their perspective, and as well as I can share from my perspective as a professor. Thank you for uh, visiting us and allowing us an opportunity to share about our program. Thank you, Dr. Flores and Kira and Sophie. I appreciate your insight so much. Um, now that um, actually Dr. Flores mentioned, um, if they had any questions, that's a great uh, point to remind all of our guests tonight to include their questions in the Q&A section um, here on Zoom. If you wanna just um, ask um, anything that uh, maybe an admissions counselor uh, doesn't know the details of, this is an exceptional opportunity to hear directly from faculty um, and get an answer from them. So make sure that you include your questions and we'll be addressing those shortly. Um, now we will go ahead and move on to uh, the Department of English and Modern Languages. And I'll direct the attention to um, uh, Dr. Petrie. Hello everyone and welcome. I am really pleased to be here, not only with all of you who are visiting with us this evening, but with colleagues with whom I collaborate regularly. As you already heard, we in the Department of English and Modern Languages, we teach a lot of the liberal studies students, especially those in the English concentration. Um, we have designed our majors and minors so they pair beautifully with many other disciplines. And so we are a very active and connected department and although we're called the Department of English and Modern Languages, as you can see, I've titled this first slide, Literature, Writing, and Languages, because these are the three things that we are passionate about, that we study, that we teach our students to do very well. And so um, we offer transferable skills, whether you study literature, whether you study creative writing, whether you study Spanish, or you do some combination of all of those things. We have students who go on to become translators and interpreters, uh, students who go on, many students who go on to graduate school and to teaching, a lot of students who become writers who have uh, published their own books, or short stories or poems that are really, or students who are becoming editors and publishers and agents in their own right. And so we focus on developing through our content transferable skills that can take our students anywhere they want to go. And so while we're here to help you get to that moment that is depicted in the picture, this is my favorite moment at APU's graduation is the moment when the fireworks go off. We're focused on helping you get to wherever you want to or will need to go in your life after 
college as well. I think the most recent studies say that most people in your generation are going to change careers and jobs uh, three times at least maybe uh, up to five. Um, some studies say, depends on which studies you read. And so we are training people to be creative problem solvers, to be interpreters of stories and translators of situations. And to, uh, we're building those skills in listening and analysis so that the complex problems that might seem tempting to oversimplify are not um, inaccessible to our students. Whether they go off and become a narrative or character developer for video games, um, or whether they go off and get a double MD PhD in medical humanities, which we currently have an alumni doing uh, right now. And so the, the foundations that are interconnected in our department are first, our disciplines. Now, we use the term discipline to describe an academic subject because we all have disciplined ourselves to know uh, it deeply, to know it well, and to teach our students to be lifelong learners who pursue truth, wisdom, and beauty through the study of literature, writing, and languages. We have a wonderful faculty a large and diverse faculty, as you already heard from my wonderful colleague, Dr. Gutierrez. We have one of our modern languages faculty is also teaching in the history uh, department. Many of our English faculty also teach in the Honors College. Many of us also are privileged to teach courses for Dr. Flores, pre-teaching students. But everything that we do, and this, this is the reason that the biggest gear that you see in the graphic to the left is faith. Everything we do is based on that pursuit that we have to help students find the pathway that God's calling them to in their lives, in their area of studies. And so the opportunities you have with us are very similar to the opportunities you could have at a large public university or any other Christian university, but we add in a little more, a little more mentoring and definitely a really deep and prioritized emphasis on faith. For instance, right now this semester, one of our special topics courses is a genre study in detective fiction. Now you could probably find a course in detective fiction at a number of universities, but could you find one that is focused on investigating at the same time the meaning of Philippians 4, 8? We're really focused on that idea of pursuing what is true, pursuing what is just, and really theologically informing our understanding of the existence of the genre, the impact of the genre. We were just planning our fall semester in meetings today, and we're going to do a special topics author seminar on Toni Morrison in the fall. Now, you could take a Morrison class at a lot of colleges, that's the truth. She was a wonderful American author, but I don't think there are many colleges where you would be taking a course in spirituality in Toni Morrison's work, and that's what we'll be teaching. And so what we have to offer is the best of what you could find elsewhere, but with that added, commitment to pursuing our faith and practicing our faith all the way through. So let me tell you a little bit then about the department. I'm putting my email address on this first slide. So you want to write it down or maybe if someone um, running the Zoom wants to make sure that it gets into the chat so everyone who wants to contact me is able to, that would be great. But this is actually a picture of our department. We do we try not to gloat, but it's hard. We are located in the original and oldest area of the APU campus, and that is the faculty quad, which is the Rose Garden. So you can see the buildings on either side of the photo. Those are our offices. And we think maybe this is the secret as to why we are so prolific in our writing and publishing. We have this wonderful space to think and create. And of course, we share it with our students. We have a lot of events here in the garden where we gather together with our students and our colleagues. But 
here are the five majors and minors that we offer in English and modern languages. So the first um, and most unit heavy is the English major. Now that's a 45 unit major, uh, but 30 of the units are from core menus, which means you may be required to take two courses in literary history, but you get to choose those two out of a menu of six, or you may need to take two courses in global ethnic and identity literatures, but again, you choose which two of the six we offer you want to take. And then once you've um, chosen the right amount of units from the core menus, you have 15 units of free electives to really uh, package in any way you want. And the way we've set up our offerings is you can get a real specialization even as an, as an undergraduate in say linguistics. We have five linguistics courses in composition and rhetoric, um, in um, creative writing. And so there are so many, or in ethnic studies, Three of our English courses actually also count for the ethnic studies minor, and we do have three professors in our department who also teach for the ethnic studies minor. So there you can really customize in the English major which way you want to go. Now the Spanish major is 33 units, 24 required in the core, then three units of conversation and six units of free electives. But the way it's designed is that many of those core courses also count in GE categories. So it is very easy to do a double Spanish major and add it to any other major. We have specific Spanish courses designed for certain professions. We have a Spanish for healthcare workers, for instance, course just for our um, students who are training to be nurses and doctors um, and physicians assistants to take. And so as uh, Aaron pointed out already, it is a great add um, to any other type of study. We also have an English minor and a Spanish minor. You have a lot of freedom within those programs. So they're really sort of miniature versions of the majors. And then we also have um, a creative writing minor where you take six courses specifically of creative writing uh, courses and you really have free choice for five of the six courses and three of the courses can also count for the English major. So it's very accessible to do an English major with a creative writing minor, have a pretty beefy transcript by the time you graduate. A little bit about our faculty. I'm not going to talk about each one of them. I can't even put the pictures of each one of them on the screen because we have 18 full-time professors in our department. We are a very active and diverse faculty, and it would take me the rest of the evening to do justice to my wonderful colleagues. And so I'll just tell you, there are a lot of us, and we also serve the Honors College, the Liberal Studies Program, the Ethnic Studies Program, um, History, um, the Gen Ed, and Writing. And so there's a lot that we do. So I've tried to make a little mini countdown to just show you a few highlights of what we do in our department. Um, 15 of us are published authors, and by published authors, I mean not just that we've published scholarly articles and reviews, which all of us do, but I mean 15 of us have published book length works, at least one and perhaps more. So as I said, we are very serious and very active in writing, and I don't know, I can't think of a better place to train to become a better writer um, than in the garden with us. So we also offer six special topics courses per year, which means they are a different topic every semester, the entire time a student's at APU. And so you have many, many chances to customize, to study very specifically, which means very deeply in special topics courses. And we find that that's a lot of the places where our students write work that win a grant from Dr. Gutierrez in the undergraduate research uh, area. A lot of those uh, projects end up being presented at national conferences, at honor society conferences. And so we love to mentor our students in their own interests and in their own research. 
Um, of our 15 authors uh, in the faculty, five of them are novelists. That's relatively exceptional for a faculty um, that it encompasses so many of the other things that we also do. So we have professors who have done uh, Christian fiction, professors who've written sci-fi fantasy, a couple professors in our department are writing their first mysteries or detective novels uh, right now. Um, and so the range, and then satire, literary fiction, we like to explore it all and we'd like to help our students explore it too. We also have a very unique opportunity that um, is not available at very many places, especially very many places within the CCCU or the Council of Christian Colleges and Universities. And that is we have a four plus one program where you can earn a BA and an MA in English in five years or less. In fact, if you come in, with AP credits and maybe a semester's worth of those, you would have you could earn a BA and an MA in four and a half years. And not only is our program set up to save time, but it saves money too. Because if you take that those MA courses in your last semester as a senior English major, you don't have to pay for them as a graduate student. They're just included in your undergraduate tuition. So you end up with about a 30% discount off an MA and a semester or a year ahead of time. So we're very um, proud of and we love teaching in our four plus one program. Continuing the countdown, we're getting closer to one. I'll say that three of our faculty are the editors for the leading scholarly journal that studies the integration of our faith with our academic discipline. Our faculty are the editors for Christianity and literature, the major journal in our field. We also have two Fulbright scholars on our faculty. Um, those of us who have taught literature or English in other countries love to share the experiences we've had doing that. We just had two students in the last two years win Fulbrights who were English majors um, and they are teaching English across the world. So that's another opportunity that we make sure our students know about. We do seminars introducing them to the JET program, which is the English teaching in Japan program. We introduce them to the Fulbright process and many other opportunities to teach abroad. English and Spanish are both languages that are very in demand in today's world, very useful um, to have expertise in. And so we're happy to share that. And then finally, not everyone knows this, but APU actually has one of the best Inkling special collections in the world. The Inkling, for those of you who don't uh, already know, is the writing group that uh, C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien were members of. And so our special collection means we have original materials, manuscripts, letters, notes, other ephemera from these authors in special collections in the APU library. And uh, so our graduate students get a chance to look at that. In our MA 4 plus 1, students can take courses, Justin Tolkien, Justin Lewis, or in all the Inklings. And so that's just a rundown of some of the more special or standout features of our department. But of course, I'd be thrilled to talk with you about any of the other things that we do. So a few opportunities. This is just a quick list of the extracurricular things that we're doing this year. Now we all love the classroom. We do a lot of intensive work in the classroom, but we're always offering students ways to get out of the classroom, connect with each other, build their skills, build their network as well, and develop um, those external skills. So this spring, we're doing a four part editors and writers series. So we'll have workshops that all students are invited to on pitching your work, publishing, platforming, launching a new work uh, for marketing. We've been doing online book clubs in English and in Spanish all year for any student on campus who wants to join. These aren't just for our majors and minors. These are ways we wanna serve and share with every uh, student at APU who's interested. 
We've been hosting on a Discord server writer sprints and writing marathons to help students get that motivation to get those research projects done on time. And uh, we show up as faculty mentors to help cheer students on and get them through. And we also are always doing service learning opportunities with local schools and churches. We do colloquia every semester to help students understand the ins and outs of applying to graduate school, of applying to teach abroad, as I was talking about, or um, of applying to those new, more leading edge programs that we've managed to place students in. Things like narrative medicine um, that are really on the edge of the discipline, but that we're working in and helping to place students in these innovative new collaborative programs. So we have also um, in-house publishing and editing opportunities. We publish a literary magazine every year and it's all student run. And so you can be an editor, a copy editor or a content editor while you're still an undergraduate and get that editing experience while you're um, in school. We also offer teaching assistantships as well as editorial and research assistantships in our department. And of course, it wouldn't be a Department of English and Modern Languages if we didn't have readings where we all share the work we've been doing. But not only do we have opportunities for students to share what they've been working on, we have prestigious guest poets coming to speak every year. These are amazing opportunities. We've already had one uh, poet laureate. That is pretty much the highest honor and position a poet can hold in the country. We've already had one poet laureate come uh, to speak to our students at APU and we're actually working on bringing another soon. So keep your eyes open for that should you choose to join us here. I also have with me, um, one of our current students, Cleo Florencia, and I'm hoping that she can maybe just say a few words about how things look from the student side of things about our department, and then open up for more questions that anyone might have. We bring back our former students all the time to talk about what life is like out there after graduation. But I'd love for you, Cleo, to talk about what it's like before graduation a little bit now. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Cleo Florenza, and like Dr. Petrie mentioned, I am in the English department. Specifically, I am an English education major, and this is my third year, but I will be graduating this spring, and so I will be pursuing my teaching credential alongside this single subject English major. Um, so that's kind of also what she was talking about. You can do everything in less than five years. I'm doing it in four years. So really how you plan it and your advisors are more than happy to sit down with you and plan that all out. Um, but I would love to give you some inside scoop to what the English department looks like. Um, so also, like she mentioned, you can do way more than just having your work published or being an editor. You can teach like what I want to do, be a high school English teacher. Um, also at elementary level, I had some peers who were English majors who want to pursue being a lawyer. Um, also with TESOL, if you want to teach English to speakers of other languages, that's an awesome opportunity that you get to do at APU as well. Um, there's also study abroad programs along with that Spanish double major that Dr. Petrie was talking about. Ecuador would be a great opportunity for that. Um, in addition to Ecuador, we have a study abroad program to Oxford, um, which some of my colleagues have gone on and cannot speak enough praises about. And so I would encourage you to look that up. Um, additionally, we also do service learning courses, similar to the liberal studies program. And so I was able to teach children adolescent literature, adolescent literature, um, also go into diversity in the classroom and get to talk to fourth graders, sixth graders, eighth graders, um, and get to teach the own lessons that I came up with and really delve into text, um, write poetry with them, teach them about drafting and editing and all these great things. Um, in addition, we have very individual and specific courses that really give you such a neat perspective into literature. Um, so I've gotten to take prose poetry, flash fiction, all sorts of American and world literature classes, um, even a whole class just on C.S. Lewis texts um, and really delve into his philosophy. And so you get a wide scope of what literature looks like. 
Um, like she mentioned, we have the creative writing minor um, and we also have that double major in Spanish, which works very well because it's a low unit requirement, but has a very high compatibility with many career paths. So if that's something you're interested in, I would definitely look at that. Um, and lastly, just to give you a little anecdote to what my experience was like, um, similar to what Kira was mentioning earlier with that GE 100 class, my class was full of all English majors and we all are kind of doing different career paths, but we were all together and had that very foundational love for reading or writing or just specific texts. And our GE 100 professor actually invited us over to her house every Monday night and we would do Bible studies, we would do devotions. Um, she would make a little snack for us or we'd have Christmas birthday, we would celebrate or she'd have a little craft table. Um, and that's not really something that you see at most universities, but we were a tight knit group of about 15 people and she welcomed us into her home, um, took that Christ cornerstone of APU and really showed us what that looked like in action. Um, and have that very intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship with us, which is what all of the professors I've gotten to experience are like. And so I hope that you at least considered this English and Modern Languages department because it is by far the best thing that I could have chosen. So I hope if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much, Dr. Beatry and Cleo, uh, for your information and your insight into um, the department. Um, we are now going to transition into a time of um, questions and answers. Uh, as a reminder, please make sure to use that Q&A function. Uh, we will be reviewing those shortly. Um, and I would like to start by asking um, a question that was submitted by one of our guests tonight. Um, and it has to do with the idea that um, a student may be interested in teaching in, in general, but they may not know exactly um, what they would like to teach. What is some practical advice um, that you as faculty can offer to the students? Um, and also some of our current students can offer some insight into how they um, arrived at the conclusion of what they wanted to teach or what major they wanted to pursue. Great, thank you. I think that's an excellent question and something um, most college students are thinking about not just which grade, but you know what to do. So that's the beauty of being at college and being at a liberal arts uh, university. Um, I think something to consider is the uh, the various opportunities you have to be at various grade levels, and then uh, you know allow the Lord to speak with you as you're doing that. You really are teaching life. You're working with life. the The curriculum is just a vehicle in which you're working life with. But uh, Sophie probably can speak to that. She's been in the program a while and probably has gone through that question as well. I love this question because I was asking it myself just four years ago. Um, and the fantastic thing is, you know, when I came in as a freshman, I thought I wanted to teach middle school math, but I was not confident in that. And I wasn't sure if I was capable of that. So the beautiful thing about the liberals, uh, not sorry, when I get excited, I talk too fast. Um, the beautiful thing about the liberal studies department is through all the service learning we've had, I've had experience teaching transitional kindergarten through seventh grade all the way through. I've taught public school, private school, subjects such as PE, English, math, art. So you really get this wide sampling of concentrated time in a classroom. So it's not like you're just spending one day here and another day there. You spend an entire semester in an environment with a teacher who that's their passion. And I don't know about you, but when I'm with someone who's passionate about something, I tend to find out real fast if I'm passionate about it as well or if it's so not for me. And so through all the experiences I've had at APU with the service learning, I've been able to come to the conclusion that I'm confident middle school math is where I want to be. And it's conf I'm confident that that's something that I can do. So I totally recommend if you're coming to APU and you want to become a teacher, but you're not sure where, just be open, really seek the Lord in prayer and see what he has for you. And then ask questions about the teachers that you're working with. Be willing to go places you might not think. When I was told I was working in transitional kindergarten, I thought it was going to be terrible. And I ended up having a great experience. You can learn in whatever classroom you're put in. So just have an open mind and open hands to whatever God's going to do through you and with you. Thank you, Sophie and Dr. Flores. Um, another question along the same lines. Um, I had a student who mentioned that they know they want to teach um, and they know they want to teach, um, say, history, for example. Would it be best for them to pursue um, a history major or to do liberal studies instead? Great question. And that probably is uh, applicable to um, my colleagues' fields, in, including English. Uh, math and science. It really depends. 
um, as you are growing in, in this process, whether you want to be at high school or whether you want to be at middle school. And then middle school is really kind of the, the middle ground. So middle ground, meaning you can do liberal studies and emphasize in your subject matter and be qualified to teach middle school. Um, but if you want to just do high school, middle, high school and middle school, then you want to consider doing the major um, of my colleagues here, like history or English and major in that. They all have teaching tracks. They're all, they uh, certify the subject matter uh, for the, and waves of uh, the exam. And then you would take pro courses in the liberal studies program that I'll give you the, the practical pieces as well. Wonderful, thank you, Dr. Flores. Um, another question is um, for students who um, are interested in APU and um, they you know, are with us tonight, but they're not sure if they should pursue um, any of the majors uh, mentioned tonight. What are um, some of the qualities of um, students that are in your current programs that you would say uh, would make them a good candidate for you know history for English Spanish liberal studies what are some of those qualities that um, they can look for and see if they would be a good fit for the programs that you offer well I will go ahead and lead off although I think we should all uh, speak to this I would say for us um, curious that you, um, we are, uh, we are all lifelong learners. We tend to attract lifelong learners and develop lifelong learners. So curious, uh, also creative and connected thinkers. I think that's another thing where you, you develop that, you learn more about that with us, but this ability to see connections and find patterns linguistically or narratively or in terms of people's life stories. A lot of us specialize in autobiography, biography and memoir. These are the things that you're gonna find people who are, who are like you. Um, curious, creative and connected thinkers. When you can make connections and see how things go together, find the patterns that everyone else isn't seeing, then you might wanna think about one of our majors. I would say something similar for history, uh, curiosity, especially if you're someone like me, I view everything through a lens of what happened before. We, I really can't understand what's happening now until I go back in time. Even when I took my position as director of undergraduate me research, my first question was who was, when, who started the program and how many people have done it and what have they done? And there was not that information. So I did the research and I wrote up a history and I put it on the website. So if you're somebody who's really curious and likes to see change over time, patterns, um, if you're an analytical person, the thing about history is we have all these primary sources and historians interpret that data. The other thing we do, which is really fun, is we can sort of be a detective to the past. Um, this project I'm working on now, it started 10 years ago. I found one will of this woman in an archive in Mexico. And then I found more documents about her life and more documents. I said, oh, I'm going to search harder. And now I have dozens of documents about one person's life and I'm piecing it all together. And now I have realized I have to go to Spain and find more information, found out she had an illegitimate son. And now I have to follow up on that. So that that's, I think, what we would look for in history, someone who's curious, someone who likes to think about where we've been to understand where we're going, um, and who is an analytical mind and is always, as Dr. Petrie said, um, always willing to learn. I learn so much from my students every time I teach. And I think that's an aspect of, of teaching that when you teach, you learn. So we welcome anyone who has that open attitude towards um, lifelong learning. Oh, man, those are excellent answers and responses. I would, I would add to that just to say, um, you know, loving learning uh, in the, the life of the mind. And in a sense, being a, being a humble learner to, to come to grips with the fact that uh, we don't know everything. That's, that's just the beauty of being at an institution like ourselves is being a, a part of a, a, a liberal arts uh, curricula. We have a general education program um, that really helps you um, kind of develop those characteristics and also find where you want to be at. Um, oftentimes people look at general education as something to get out of the way or get done, but that's really not the truth. It's really an integrative program 
that puts you cross disciplinary so you can discover these other uh, amazing areas and opportunities that you do have. And I wanna quickly put on my parent hat to say, I have three adult children that have come through this program. None of them did my major, though they really like my major, uh, but they did majors of people that are on this screen here. And um, I am very proud of the fact that they all got accepted to prestigious universities. They eventually chose to come here uh, because of some of these things we've talked about. And uh, so that's something to really consider. And ultimately, uh, as a Christian university, uh, you know, we seek God. And then that's, and God really is the, is where you're going to find your fulfillment in, in whatever curricular area you choose. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, and then very briefly, um, I want our guests tonight to imagine um, themselves having made that decision and maybe um, walking through Cooper Walk on their way to their first class. Um, what advice uh, would you give to these students? And I want to address this question specifically to our current students that are with us tonight. Very briefly, in a few words, what advice would you give to these students um, should they choose APU for their first year, their first semester at APU? Reach out to your professors. It's kind of scary because a lot of them are super smart and this is their life and you're just this student who showed up and you have no idea what you're doing, but they really truly care about you and they want to know you as a person, not just you as a student. I've had several professors that I've had coffee or lunch with outside of class just to help me feel less homesick. Your professors really do care about you. So even if it's scary, reach out, make connections, ask your questions. There really is no such thing as a stupid question or if there is, I haven't been told. And that's my advice is just make your connections with your professors because they really care about you and they wanna to get to know you. For me, I think the advice I would offer is just to approach your college education with a, with a posture of openness, definitely. I definitely didn't stay on the track that I thought I would be staying on when I arrived at APU. I was a theater major when I started and now here I am straddling the Department of English and Modern Languages and the Department of History and Political Science. So just approach your education with an open mind. Know that your professors have put in a lot of work, then all of the classes you have to take, they'll holistically prepare you to impact the world positively and just have as much grace with yourself as possible. Perfect. Well, thank you so much um, to our current students and our faculty um, for dedicating this time to share with our prospective students. And um, also those of you who are with us um, online, thank you for taking uh, this time out of your day to join us. Um, and we will make sure to reach out to you. We'll um, make sure to connect with you after this meeting is over. And um, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, feel free to connect with us as well. I will leave uh, my information specifically in the chat feature and um, we'll be able to uh, connect in the future. So thank you so much and have a great night.